Today, on Be Something Wonderful, never tolerate unwanted 3D conditions ever again. I am your host, Tom Kieran, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, welcome back. Big video today. I want to talk about a client that had a question about uh, in a session yesterday. Tom, what's the difference between tolerating 3D unwanted, what you judge as unwanted 3D conditions, and accepting them? And this also came up on the channel yesterday as a question. Now, I just want to point out that if you're asking that question, we've done a lot on accepting, then it's, it's likely or implied that you're likely tolerating the conditions and not accepting them. Because you'll know when you're accepting them. Accepting the 3D conditions is accepting the truth and fulfillment behind all appearances. In other words, it's, that's why Jesus said, judge not according to appearance. The message was that you shouldn't judge by appearances. The message was that you can't possibly judge appearances. You don't have the greater view. You don't have the broader view. You don't have the higher vantage point as a 3D personality to know what those appearances mean, right? You don't see the unseen. So you don't have the total, you don't have the total vantage point of your I am awareness on what that means because it's all fulfillment. That's what acceptance means. It means accepting that there's only fulfillment, accepting that all conditions are leading you to what you want, accepting that there's a truth behind all appearances. There's love behind all appearances. It, it's, not, it, it's about not giving power to the conditions, right? Denying the conditions power over you. That's why Jesus said you would have no power, could have no power against me or over me or authority unless it was given from above. Knowing that your I am gives the power to all conditions. Right? Versus tolerating is a conditional state, meaning I'll tolerate these conditions. I'll imagine, I'll assume, I'll stay in wish fulfilled, but these conditions better change if I do that. Do you see it? That, it's more of that state that, that you're, you're tolerating them, you're assuming, you're imagining your wish fulfilled, you're in the, you believe you're in the state of wish fulfilled, you believe you're in that, uh, you're, you have your I am awareness on it, but only as a condition that they change into what you want, that you believe that they should be. You're judging them, right? And, and, and you can't judge anything because there's a greater reality behind it. So it's not, it's not about trying to tolerate them until they change. That comes from lack. Acceptance comes from love, accepting the truth behind all appearances. That, there, that, that behind all appearances is just fulfillment. Behind all appearances is who you really are. The, one of the most powerful examples of that I gave a couple months ago when I talked about this client that was living with his parents and, and, and I guess in the basement or in that little apartment there. He had no money to move and, he, and his relationship was strained with his, strained with his parents. He wanted to improve that as well. But he, he felt there was no way out. Right? The relationship with his parents wasn't good. He, he felt that he, he couldn't, he wanted to get into his dream job of a, being a property manager. And then he wanted to live in, a, in his dream city, living in an apartment that had a, a, a big window and a view of the city. In other words, like a penthouse apartment where you have that city view, right? And, 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 and you know, making great money. This was his dream, right? This is what he wanted, but, and he was imagining it. But, but he was focused more on tolerating the conditions. He wasn't letting go of that old identity that was tolerating the conditions until his reality changed, that was tolerating living um, without relying on his parents to, for an apartment, relying on his parents that he couldn't leave. He was keeping those conditions in place by tolerating them. Do you see it? That creates those conditions. The idea that you're tolerating them means you're putting them there, means you believe in them, means you believe that, that beyond, that they're just not in the parents, they're not a temporary form in your I am awareness. You believe they're solid conditions that are keeping you away from what you want. Versus accepting conditions, you give them no power, you deny the power over you, 
right? Your, your I am is the one and only power. You would have no power over me unless it was given from above, like Jesus said to Pontius Pilate. Here you're giving them power. You're giving them reality, right? They better change. Here it's out of the love of, of reality, out of the love of fulfillment, out of knowing that it's all fulfillment. Here it's, a, it's, it's out of lack, right? And so what happened to him? He decided that he just decided at that moment, I'm done with tolerating, hear this, 3D conditions until something changes. In fact, he got, I'm going to accept the truth of who I am. I'm going to accept this new identity, that I am that identity that lives in that apartment that has that dream job. He moved to that. It was like an anomalous burst of energy that I've talked about before, right? He moved into total acceptance. And he goes, I woke up the next morning and nothing changed, right? That's what he said. Nothing changed in 3D, but he did. And so now conditions must form around that new identity. Do you see, he was no longer stuck here being the, the victim of tolerating conditions. And here he was the creator of the conditions, right? Conditions are conditions, but I am. So it's not that you it, judge not according to appearance. The message is not that you shouldn't judge by appearances, right? Remember, it's not telling you what you should or shouldn't do. It's saying that you just can't judge by appearances. You can't know what that less than 0.0001% of 3D conditions mean. They're meaningless, right? That, that meant that they're meaningless until you give them meaning. That's what Bashar says, you give them all meaning, right? And what meaning are you going to give them? Are you going to give them the meaning of fulfillment and love or the meaning of non-fulfillment and lack? You get to give the meaning. Nothing's missing. Nothing's wrong. You're not missing anything. You're not doing anything wrong with, with your processes. You just haven't moved into the love of that reality. That's what acceptance means, right? To stop tolerating conditions, right? And, and instead create them. Move to that, that new identity. That's what he did. So let's cover this a little bit more. Remember what A Course in Miracles says. Appearances deceive because they are appearances and not reality. They're not reality, right? <laughs> Tolerating judge unwanted conditions implies there's a solidity and reality to those conditions. You continue to put them there by tolerating them. You create a reality to be tolerated. You create a perception to be tolerated. Do you see it? Appearances, they're just changing forms. They're just changing appearances, but you get deceived by them, believing they're solid, believing you need to tolerate them. Right? Versus accepting them as a temporary form and appearance within the awareness of your I am and all that is and all that you are. Do you see the difference? That, that's big there, right? You, cre you create the perception that it needs to be tolerated. You put them there. You're tolerating them as unwanted. You're giving them solidity and, and reality. Right? You continue to put them there versus accepting them as a temporary form of appearance within the awareness of I am and all that is and all that you are, and then they must dissolve. And you must now create around you. 3D reality now must rearrange itself. And as A Course in Miracles says, Jesus will rearrange time and space. Because <laughs> Jesus goes, I will rearrange time and space as you move into that state of knowing, as you move into that state of what you want versus hanging on to an old identity hanging on to an old reality. You go, well, Tom, I'm not hanging on to it. I'm imagining what I want. But you're tolerating those conditions. You believe you have to tolerate them. You keep putting them there. So you're imagining what you want. You're assuming it. But at the same time, you're hanging on to that old identity. You're not detaching from the old man, as Neville Goddard says. You're not letting that old reality go. You're not dying to the old you and resurrecting to your new reality, resurrecting to that new state of consciousness. So, even as you believe in your power to create, imagine, manifest, and assume and perceive what you desire, you still give power to the 3D conditions. All of them, right? You, your faith gets shaken as undesired conditions, as the, as the 3D conditions, right, turn, turn into something what you call undesired appearances or, or conditions. They seem to persist, right? Your faith gets shaken as they seem to persist. This is what many of you said. I've been in my wish fulfilled. I've been imagining for months, even years. So tell me what's going on. Remember, you're, you're not letting go of that old reality. 
right? You're not letting go of that old identity. Even as you imagine and, and, and you assume and you, and you perceive what you desire in your mind's eye, right? Then your faith gets shaken as undesired conditions or parents have seen to persist. You start doubting your I amness. I am that I am no matter what. That's the, that's the state. That's accepting 3D conditions, accepting appearances and knowing the greater reality behind it. I am that I am no matter what, right? Remember, that's why Jesus wept at the tomb of Lazarus, his friend, right? As Mary and Martha were crying and the others were crying, right? And they knew that Jesus could resurrect Lazarus. Right? They, they knew that. And even, even um, Mary says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. My brother would not have died. Did you see it there that, that you believe in that higher power, the Christ within, but at the same time, the same time you're doubting it and you're doubting your place within the divine mind. I am source and there is another. So, so Mary and Martha believed but, but then they still doubted. They believed in that higher power, that I am, but they're still done and they're, saying, they're still believing in the conditions that, that their brother is dead. Do you see it? They're, they're believing in the dead thoughts, the dead conditions, right? The, the dead assumptions. And, the, and they're believing that, that, that those conditions have power. That's what they're saying. They, they knew, they, they, they had faith, they knew Jesus' power, but they were still doubting it that, oh, he died, you're still believing in those conditions, even at the same time knowing that you can resurrect to that higher state, that you can create the conditions of your life. But we still get caught in the appearances. We still get caught in the temporary conditions. Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would have not died. Do you see it? You believe in that higher power, that Christ within, but at the same time, you doubt it, right? And you doubt your place within the divine mind. I am source and there is no other. Conditions are conditions, but I am. That's very powerful. Mary, right, who, who said, Lord, if you had been here, right, he would not have died. Mary, like you, is implying those conditions shouldn't be there. This is another meaning of this. Right? She's also saying, like, well, he shouldn't be dead. Though, meaning you're saying well, the, the, those conditions shouldn't be there. Why do I have to tolerate these conditions? They shouldn't even be there. If, if you were there, they, they wouldn't have been there. In other words, remember, Jesus represents your I am. If I'm assuming and imagining and, and in my wish fulfilled, those conditions shouldn't be there. That's what you're saying. They've been there for a year or six months, and they shouldn't be there if I'm in my state of wish fulfilled. That, so you're, you're again... There's, you're, the faith is shaken here. You're not in that I am. You're not saying I am that I am no matter what. You're saying I am that I am only if the conditions change. But if they persist, then I can't be that I am. Do you see it? I can't keep assuming. If I'm work, if, and so, yeah, so if I am worked, imagining and persisting in my assumption of fulfillment, then these conditions wouldn't be showing up. That's the other thing you're saying. If I am worked, if the whole I am state or the whole state of imagining my wish fulfilled, assuming it, taking my stand in my I am, I'm declaring my assumption that I am that reality, if it worked, if that imagining and that assuming worked, then these conditions wouldn't be showing up. That's like Mary saying, my brother wouldn't have died if you had been here. Do you see the doubt? That's why Jesus wept. Right, right. He was weeping at the lack of uh, that. That he knew that they believed in him, but they didn't believe in themselves. As a, do you see it? They they knew he believed in him. I am, right. They knew they be believe. They hear the distinction here. They knew that he believed. They believed in him. I am as that I am awareness. But you don't believe in your place, your power in that divine mind for it to work through you. You be, you're, you're doubting yourself. You're doubting your own place in that divine mind, right? That's what Jesus was weeping about, that you still don't understand that, it's he, that that power is internal. That's what the eternal life represents. Eternal life is that eternal power within you to continue to create what you want, right? To continue to, to imagine, assume, and evolve as that I am awareness, right? So I am, if I am work, then it wouldn't be there. And it also represents you hanging on to your old identity in reality, and not allowing yourself to detach from the conditions. 
not allowing yourself to die to the old identity in reality and rise in consciousness to your new identity in reality. Do you see that? That, that Jesus wept because they're all, they're all that lack of faith, even as they believe in him, they don't believe in themselves. That's the message that, remember, you play all the parts. You play Jesus, you play Mary, you play Martha, you play Lazarus. <laughs> or you play all the parts. You don't believe in yourself as the center of that divine mind. Right? That, that those appearances are temporary. That, that you, get to, you get to let go or detach from those appearances and rise in consciousness to your desired reality. But you're, but you're believing Lazarus is dead, dead, dead for four days, as we've talked about, right? You continue to tell the story that I've been manifesting this for months and years. How long do I have to tolerate these conditions until something changes? Do you see it? That's the whole, it's a great, the resurrection of Lazarus is a great example because it said that he was dead for four days. Remember, there's a significance to that that I, I've talked about in ver several videos, that it was believed back then that after three days, after three days, the spirit leaves the body. And then, therefore, it would make resurrecting even more unlikely, raising him coming back from the dead more unlikely, if not impossible, because his spirit left his body, right? So Lazarus was dead, dead. Those conditions are dead, dead. You're believing in them. It's gone on so long that you're believing it's so, they're so dead that, that you believe that they can't change, right? Because you're attached to them. You keep believing in them, right? And, and remember, believing in your I am, believe as I am, right? Believe as that awareness. Not, so, not just in the awareness, but as that awareness. Not just in God, but as God. That's what we're talking about here. So... Your tolerating keeps them in place, concealing the truth behind all appearances. Do you see it? That's why Jesus said when he went to the tomb, remove the stone. Right? The stone is the, is the, is the 3D, uh, all of our wishes being concealed by the appearances of temporary form in 3D reality. The material, sealed in that material consciousness, sealed into that lower state of of the 3D personality believing in those conditions. That's why Jesus said, it's not, so you're, you're tolerating that. You're even afraid to remove the stone, right? That, that tolerating keeps them in place. It conceals the truth. The stone on the, on the tomb of Lazarus was, consumed, was concealing the truth. That, that actually there, there's only eternal life. In other words, there's only your wish fulfilled. There's only what you want. All appearances are temporary. That you've always been fulfilled. And that you will always be fulfilled. That you exist and will always exist. That eternal life is the only reality. Right? That that I am awareness is the only reality. That the eternal life of you living your wish fulfilled is the only reality. That all other forms are temporary. Remove the stone. And then Martha says to, to Jesus when Jesus commands that, right? Lord, by this time there will be a stench, for he has been dead for four days. There again, the four days. That's you saying, well, these conditions have been going on for months or years and nothing has changed. It's just starting to stink. <laughs> right, it's starting to think that, that you can't, I, there's no way I can remove the stone. There's no way I can, I can accept these conditions. Hear it? Removing the stone is accepting the conditions, knowing that behind that stone are the greater appearances. Behind that stone is Lazarus walking out of that tomb alive. But you don't want to believe it. You want to believe it's just going to stink and that it's, everything's dead. Right? You still believing in the dead past, in the dead thoughts, in the dead assumptions. Weeks, months, years, Lazarus was dead, dead. You believe your wishes are dead, dead. That's all you're seeing. It doesn't think that there's any life there. You don't want to remove the stone. Right? But then they do. And then I am, or Jesus commands, Lazarus come forth. Right? But, but remember, even as Lazarus came forth, he was still bound and wrapped in his grave clothes. So Jesus commanded, right, that you still bound in your dead thoughts, in your dead assumptions, in your, in your, in your dead past, 
right? Still wrapped in that, still believing that, that your wish fulfilled is dead, dead, that, that it's gone on weeks and nothing has changed, that you, you keep trying to imagine, right? You keep I aming, but nothing has changed. You're still bound and wrapped in your grave clothes. And that's why Jesus commanded, unbind him and let him go. Unbind yourself. Loose him and let him go. Unbind yourself from the dead past, from the dead thoughts, from the dead assumptions, from believing that months or years have gone by, believing that that matters. Right? It only, everything, remember, gets created right now in the eternal now moment. That's what eternal life means. There's only the eternal now where all things are happening. It's not that, when, when you talk about past lives, all those lives are happening right now. You're living all of those realities, all of those lives right now. That's what eternal life is. Every part of that multidimensional soul exists right now in the here and now. All possibilities exist for you, but yet you're focused on the dead past, the dead thoughts. Yet you're wrapped, you're standing there in your grave clothes as you, ima as you imagined your wish fulfilled, but the conditions still haven't changed. You're still wrapped and bound in those conditions. Let them go. That's what, ne that's what Neville meant by letting the old man go, dying to your old self, dying to your old identity, right? That, that's, what la that's what Lazarus represents. Those, remember, dying to that old reality, but, but even as you die to that old reality, you're still hanging on to it. Even as you imagine you wish fulfilled, you were afraid to remove the stone. You were afraid to call your new reality forth. You were still hanging on to the dead past. You were still believing in the, in the, in the appearances. You were still being deceived, as A Course in Miracles says, right? So, A Course in Miracles says this about appearances. Dwell not on them in any form. Powerful. This is from A Course in Miracles. They but obscure reality and bring fear because they hide the truth. This is the, I love how this ties into the story of Lazarus. Do you see it? Dwell not on them in any form. They but obscure reality. Remove the stone, right? Bring fit and, and bring fear because they hide the truth. The stone's hiding the truth. That Lazarus is alive. That Lazarus has eternal life, right? Dwell not on those conditions. It's the difference between accepting conditions and tolerating the difference. It's the difference between love versus lack. Accepting conditions is seeing and knowing the love of all that is and I am behind them. Seeing your potential, your infinite self behind all of those conditions. Tolerating conditions is seeing and believing in the lack of them, of what you want and desire. This is what A Course in Miracles says. Do not attack what you have made to, to let you be deceived. Because remember, you create it all. Do not attack those conditions. Right? Do not attack them by tolerating them. Because that's attacking them. You're by saying you've got to tolerate them, that's attacking them, right? Do not attack what you have made to let you, what you have made to let you be deceived. And sometimes we're not even, we're, it's more than just tolerating them, we are attacking them. We're complaining about them, we're trying to get rid of them, we're trying to change them, right? For this you prove that you have been deceived. I love this. When you're, when you're tolerating them, we're trying to change them, we're trying to get rid of them, you're just proving that, they, that, that, that you are um, tricked by those appearances, that you're believing in them, you're putting them there. You prove that you've been deceived. In other words, you put them there. You keep them in place. Attack has the power to make illusions real. This is what A Course in Miracles says. In other words, make them real to you. Right? Make them real to you as you keep, keep them there. Yet, what it makes is nothing. But of course, in miracles, is saying, but but they're nothing, they're nothing but it, but but in your but something in your mind, right? These appearances, these conditions, you believing in them. Who could be made fearful by a power that can have no real effects at all? The reason those conditions ha have no power and have no effects is because they're not source. And what's not source cannot have effects. What's not cause cannot have effects. Do you see it then? Conditions are not cause or source of anything. And what is not cause or source of anything cannot have effects. That's what A Course in Miracles said. Who could be made fearful by a power that can have no real effects at all? They're not source. They're not, they're not first cause. They're not cause of anything. They are a reflection of what's going on within you. You are source and there is no other. That's powerful. So that's the idea. Never tolerate unwanted 3D conditions ever again. 
I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of Higher Consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, thank you. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for liking and sharing and commenting on our videos. Thank you for being part of our Facebook group, the Be Something Wonderful Ambassadors at facebook.com slash groups slash Be Something Wonderful for joining us on Instagram and Twitter at Tom Karen, for joining our membership channel. There's a link below. Uh, we just released a video about a week ago now, very powerful video on the membership channel. We're also doing a live stream in a few weeks at the end of the month, right around Halloween on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. in the morning. We're going to come to you live right here from the studios of Be Something Wonderful in Las Vegas. I'm going to answer your questions on info at besomethingwonderful.com. That's going to be broadcast exclusively on the Be Something Wonderful membership channel. And you're gonna, if you can't make uh, it live, it will also be available for viewing after. And don't forget, we, we now have launched our TikTok. We're still working out tweaks. <laughs> some of the, some of the um, uh, text doesn't, is not quite right. There's some spelling mistakes, but we're gonna keep those videos on there because they're powerful. And, I, and we're gonna keep improving those videos. But we're now on TikTok. More is going to be downloaded today, tomorrow, and so just keep looking for us there. We're, we're moving forward. We're, we're, we're starting to um, really get some ideas on where to take this next. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio uh, of higher consciousness where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, with great love, with great light, and infinite gratitude, this is Tom in the studios of Be Something Wonderful in Las Vegas. Until next time.